Hi guys, today we'll see how to create an almost free self-hosted personal assistant voice agent. And I say almost free because it will cost you around 3 euros a month. Okay, so it's for many people, it's virtually free. And to get to this result, we're going to be using self-hosted LiveKit instance. Okay, instead of using BAPI or any paid platform alternative. Okay, then we're going to be using a LiveKit dashboard that I've built myself for easy agent creation with no code. However, you can also code the agent if you do not want to use this dashboard. Okay, you have that freedom. We're going to be using web calls instead of phone calls to remove the phone calling costs. Okay, the phone calling per minute cost. And then we're going to be using the Google Live API free tier if we use Gemini 2.0 Flash. Okay, so first, if you want to have this self hosted, you'll have to purchase one of these BPSs. I recommend Hetzner Cloud as it's pretty cheap and it's reliable okay and it's just going to cost you well three euros and a half a month okay and it's going to have four gigs of ram that it's enough for what we are building just a personal assistant okay then you'll need to watch this video that where i show you how to install LiveKit into the vps and that's how you are going to get the self-hosted LiveKit instance installed it's going to take you around 20 minutes probably if you follow the tutorial purchase the bps it's going to take you around 20 minutes not too long okay then to get this live kit dashboard for agent creation you'll have to get into my school community that the link is down below in the description and going to classroom free self-hostable resources dashboard for live kit agent creation here you'll find the dashboard itself okay so this is um the dashboard installation guide here you have all the chapters and here you have the files to download the dashboard itself because this dashboard is 100% self-hostable. Great, so now that you have installed the dashboard or that you are ready to code the agent, you'll have to create a new agent. In my case, I'm going to just show you what I have added into the personal assistant agent that I have already created to have all this prepared for the video. And after showing you what I have added in this creation form, I'm going to show you the code generated by the dashboard, okay, that gives you full access to the code if you want to modify the code for whatever reason, okay, I'm going to just show you quickly the code, okay, and then I'm going to show you how to connect the agent to an agent so that we can add tools to the agent, okay, but first we will have to select Gemini Live API, it's selected by default, I think, or if it comes with OpenAI by default, just change to Google and it's going to select Google Live API. You can also, if you want, use separate STTLLM and TTS models, but I would recommend if you want to keep cost low, just use the Gemini Live API, okay? Then select whatever voice available that you want, set the first message of the personal assistant, and then define here, this system problem is going to be available in my school community too, if you just want to download it, but I'm going to walk you through everything if you want to craft a system prompt by yourself, okay? So first we're defining the personality, then the environment, the tone and style of the talk and so on and then the different goals that the agent is going to have in this case i have only defined one goal with different phases as you can see here and a success is measured by variable or message okay but you can add different goals then you go here and add goal two okay and so on i would recommend have an llm for example gemini add this goal so that it's going to be quicker and it's going to follow the same format that the goal that comes here is using. Then here we're going to be defining guardrails just to make sure that the agent is not doing actions that we do not want it to do or that it's not behaving in a way that we do not want it to do. And also to make sure that it is doing explicitly what, it, what we want it to do. Then we are defining the tools. This is basically saying, okay, you should be using specifically this tool to check the current data time and so on. Okay, so by just defining when it should be using and how it should be using them. Okay, and finally, we're going to be defining some variables that are going to be used in the system prompt and also used in the tools. 
calling okay for example the time zone is a really important variable because it's going to be used in a lot of tools that i'm going to be showing you now okay because these tools are going to be defined inside of the n8n mcp server and here you'll have to provide the url okay i'm going to save and as I've said, if you are a more advanced user and you want to get access to the code of the agent, as you can see, it will give you access to the agent's code. In this case, I'm going to reveal the personal assistant.py agent, that is exactly the same agent that I have shown you around. Okay. So first it's going to be importing everything, then it's going to be saving the session instruction and so on, the entry point, whether it's going to be using Google api and so on or it's going to be using other um so providers okay in the std llm separate std llm mode okay the silo robot agent session here is going to call the mcp server with the url that we have provided inside of the form and yeah this is all code generated by the dashboard if you want to modify anything you have freedom to do okay but at least the dashboard is going to save you a lot of time of setting up the personal assistant and also it's going to save you time on telephony because it's going to give you access to telephony too out of the box without you having to code anything and it's also going to give you a web testing environment where you're going to be able to do web calls okay and in the next um update i'm working on an embed function okay so you're going to be able to embed with an iframe or just uh, copying the link to the agent to be able to make a call okay great so now we're going to hop on to the mcp server so please go to n8n cloud if you want or to your self-hosted n8n instance create a new mcp server trigger by just looking for mcp mcp server trigger okay and now double click go to production url copy the production url go back to the live kit dashboard edit it and paste the link into the n8 mcp server url okay save it of course and then make sure that it is active great so now we're going to be taking a look at the different tools that i have added but of course this is just an example of what you could be doing but you can connect whatever tools you want okay there are a lot of integrations that n8 provide you with and also if you need to integrate any other software that there is not a native integration you could connect to the api with the http request tool okay so yeah you have a lot of things for example you could have it connected to google drive to graphql to hubspot to intercom to jenkins there are a lot okay to for example google analytics I'm sure that I saw it. Well, I can find it exactly now, but it could be reading the analytics of your website and telling you how everything is going inside of the call. So that's quite comfortable to be checking the analytics of your website, I would say. So yeah, there are a lot of things, but I have chosen some of the most simple ones just to show you what it is capable of. So first of all, you'll need to have this tool so that the agent knows exactly what is the current date and time, okay? I have connected also the read email and send email tools of the gmail just so that the agent is going to be able to check our email and send emails to people reply to people and so on okay i have also added the get calendar events and create calendar event tools so that the agent can manage our calendar or tell us whatever we have in a specific day so i think it's quite good to have a voice agent connected to the google calendar and then um, here it is about connecting a knowledge base to the agent. Okay, this is a rack system, a self-hosted rack system that I already made a video about. I talked about it in this video that it's currently the better performing video in my channel. So yeah, I just go through all the installation process of LightRack, that it's a self-hosted 
rack system and then how to connect it to LiveKit and so on okay basically to connect it to the LiveKit dashboard to the agent we're using these two tools okay so it's going to be able to retrieve information from the knowledge base but also it's going to be able to add information to the rack system okay to the knowledge base the agent is going to add information if you ask the agent to add it directly or also you could be defining inside of the system prompt that the agent should be saving whatever information it considers to be important okay and it is important to note that the data is completely private in this case when it's already saved of course when you are telling the agent it's not completely private because we are going to be using gemini live api as i have already said and the data that you tell the AI model, it's going to be saved, I think, in the servers of Google. I think that there was a law in the US or that there was jurisprudence or something like that forced AI companies to save data. But yeah, when the data gets to your server, it's going to be completely private. And then I have also added something that I found to be quite interesting. You could tell the agent to call a person and it's not going to hang up on you. It's just going to launch another instance, another copy of itself with a phone attached so that it can call, for example, a restaurant to book a table. And it's going to be using an API endpoint that you have access to when you install the live kit dashboard that i have talked about if you go to api curls you'll find an endpoint that it's called create ASIP participant that it's going to make an outbound call and it's going to give you the opportunity to make an outbound call by just providing all these I have actually made a video on outbound calling two days ago, okay? It is titled This AI SDR Cold Calls 24-7 and it's using this endpoint that I have shown you. So just to link a phone number, you have to purchase a phone number from Twilio or from Telnix, for example. I use Telnix. Then purchase a phone number, add it here, create a zip trunk with a new outbound trunk, select the phone number, the address in case of the Telnix it's going to be zipptelnix.com and provide the auth username and password that you have set inside of Telnix. Then create a dispatch rule by just selecting the agent that you want to make uh, the calling. Okay, and that's going to be it. Because actually this tool here can trigger a call using a different agent. Okay, if you have a different agent that is specialized on calling restaurants to book tables, if you want to create that agent, it's extremely easy with this form creation. If you just want to have this specific function, you can do that. And yeah, the personal assistant is going to be triggering a call using a specific phone number that you have created, that you have um, assigned in the SIP trunking and with a specific agent that you have assigned in the dispatch rule, okay? So yeah, as I have said, you can add whatever integrations you want the agent to have access to. Just keep in mind that when the agent is getting access to that data, it's not going to be private, no longer private, as I have told you already why. And I have already told you how to add a phone number if you want. Just keep in mind that, of course, if you purchase a phone number and connect it to an agent, the cost of running the personal assistant is going to rise. And just to do this web call that I was talking about, instead of phone calling your voice agent, because it's going to cost you more, you just have to start the agent, make sure that it is started and click test. And it's going to forward you to a screen that looks like this and you'll be inside of a call with the agent. Okay, as you can see, I'm talking and it's detecting the microphone, Samsung Meteor mic. This is the microphone that you see here. Okay, and yeah, you can actually chat with the agent if you want. Maybe the agent can talk, but you do not have any microphone. So you'll be able to type and the agent is going to respond to you via voice. And if you want, you can also, if you are using Gemini Live API, Live API you can also toggle a camera video input that the agent is going to be able to see what you are showing it. Okay, you could be activating this function, save. Please be sure to restart the agent just to make sure that the code 
it's completely updated and then click test again. Great. And now you'll be able to either share your web, your, how is it called? Your webcam. Okay. If you are in the PC or a camera, if you are in mobile, because this is web, this dashboard is accessible via web. Okay. So you'll be able to get access to the dashboard via your phone and you could be having a call with your phone. And then you can also share your screen if you want. Okay. You just have to select a screen okay and as you can see now I'm sharing the OBS studio that I'm using to record this video and this way Gemini is going to be able to help you through anything that you have a trouble to for example if you are using HubSpot you'll be able to ask the agent could you please help me getting data from a specific customer and you are showing the customer and then the agent is going to give you the data okay via voice i think there are a lot of applications to ai voice agents in this case with screen sharing and so on just remember that the dashboard the system prompt and also i have not said that this mcp server is going to be available in my school community and now go watch this video there i will be talking about 22 best practices to building ai voice agents that actually don't mess up see you there